This is a 2016 Ram 3500 with a Cummins 6.7 liter diesel engine and it has the exact same problem that your stock truck has. A suicidal grid heater. The current that goes to these grid heaters is too high or well it's high enough to burn the bottom bolt of the grid heater off drop it into the engine and cause catastrophic failure. Chrysler is well aware of this defect as a matter of fact in the FCA service manual they warn their service technicians that when they're troubleshooting an intake air heater problem that they should not long cycle the grid heaters because it could burn up the grid heater and cause catastrophic engine damage. Another thing they go on to say in the FCA service manual is that bolt right there. They tell the technicians to check that for looseness. We call it the jiggle test here on the forum. And they tell their technicians that if that's loose at all, even a little, to immediately remove and replace the grid heater because that tells you that there could be a missing bolt or a partially burnt bolt inside the engine which will certainly blow the engine when it falls into a cylinder. The grid heater relay. I call it a solenoid, but the service manual refers to it as a relay. There was a TSB issued on this component a few years back. They have a nasty habit of failing in the on position. That means that once you start your truck and the PCM sends an on command to the relay, it stays on even after the on command has been dropped. So you're driving around town all afternoon with the grid heater energized continuously. It becomes a race between destroying your electrical system first or burning up the grid heater first and possibly blowing the engine. The dealership flowchart boys may be able to replace the grid heater, and if you're real lucky, they may even catch the fact that the grid heater relay is bad. But the stress that the failed relay caused to the truck's entire electrical system will keep them guessing for months. If you ever have the dealership change a grid heater for you, and then once you get your truck back, you start noticing numerous weird electrical issues like strange behavior of your cruise control, heated seats that keep turning themselves off and on, or that turning on your fog lights turns off your air conditioning. You'll know it's time to sell the truck. If you bring it back to the dealer, he's going to keep it for a few days, tell you he flashed the body control module, and it's ready to be picked up. But trust me, it's not fixed. It's just the beginning of the saga. Anyway... Let's get back to the original gist of this video. One way to get around this problem on a stock truck that still has the grid heater is simply to reduce the current that goes to the grid heater. It's not that difficult. What you need to do is just make a little voltage divider circuit here. We simply put another resistor that the flashlight's on right there in series with the grid heater circuit. So what that does is it reduces the current on the grid heater, in this case from about 225 amps down to about 150. The grid heater still gets very hot, but not white bolt burning hot. And this way you can step away from that threshold where there's enough energy to burn that bolt off. To do that, the problem occurs that if the current goes under 200 amps on the grid heater circuit you're gonna throw a P2609 code and after two start cycles actually on the third start cycle if the code is still there you're gonna set a check engine light on your dashboard and the reason that happens is because the intelligent battery sensor right there on your negative terminal on the driver's side looks at the voltage and the current of the truck all the time and it knows where it should be it controls when the alternator should charge more or less it looks at the grid heater the battery condition and one of the things it does 
is it looks for a significant drop in battery voltage when the grid heater cycles. The grid heater is near a dead short on your battery, so it drops the battery voltage from about a healthy 13 volts down to a very anemic 10 or 11. It looks for that drop so that it knows that the grid heater is healthy. If it doesn't see that drop, it sets a P2609 code, which is a uh, failure or impending doom <laughs> for your grid heater circuit. It knows that if that grid heater circuit doesn't show that drop, it could be in the process of burning or already burnt off, and it'll blow the engine. So when Chrysler set up the programming for this, they watched the P2609 closely. Now, with the reduction in current on the stock grid heater, I don't have to worry about burning a bolt off, but I still get a P2609 code because the intelligent battery sensor is still looking for that um, 200 amps when the grid heater cycles. So what I had to do is put a resistor, a I guess you'd call it a dummy load, right here. And this dummy load adds in enough current on the battery to ground through a grid resistor. I don't know if you can see it right in there. And that develops the 200 amps between about I'm going to use round numbers, about 100 amps on my stock grid heater and another 100 on this um, dummy load, together that equals 200 amps so that the intelligent battery sensor is satisfied. It's happy with that. It sees that load. I wanted to clarify some statements I made earlier about the intelligent battery sensor. The uh, intelligent battery sensor doesn't actually make any decisions or turn anything off and on. All it's doing is looking at the voltage and the current of the electrical system right at the battery and sending that information to the body control module. From there it's put on the CAN bus and other systems in the vehicle use that information for whatever is necessary whether it's controlling the grid heater, setting malfunction codes, controlling the output of the alternator. So the intelligent battery sensor itself is just generating this signal. It's not actually making the decisions. Those decisions come from the particular module, usually the powertrain control module. This is a shot of the coils I used to develop my dummy load resistor so I can get the uh, grid resistor circuit up to 200 amps and uh, satisfy the uh, body control module not to set a code. Um, I bought two frames. Each frame had two resistors in it. So I had four separate uh, coils to work with and I used a fresh car battery and a clamp on amp meter and a voltmeter and uh, did my experiments to get the current on the truck's electrical system up to 200 amps while keeping the current on the actual grid heater down to about 125 so the grids get hot but not white hot. In the next clip the LCD voltmeter is reading the actual system voltage and not the synthetic voltage reading generated by the ECU. Also note that the red LED is connected to the actual grid heater and not the PCM's relay command. So I can see what the grid heater is actually doing and not what the PCM thinks the grid heater is doing. The LED is a must in case the grid heater relay was ever to fail in the on position. First you'll notice the static battery voltage sitting at about 12.4 volts. Then the key is switched on and the grid heater preheat sucks that voltage down to about 11.4 volts. At this point the LED turns on with the grid heater. Then the engine starts and the charging system is able to get the voltage up to about 12 volts. Finally, after 30 seconds, the grid heater turns off and the charging system is now able to get the voltage up to a proper 14.2 volts. You'll notice that the grid heater only cycled itself on once for 30 seconds and then was off for the duration of the run. I did a test last winter and I had noticed that it's 30 seconds on, 6 seconds off, over and over again, according to how cold it is. Uh, this particular test was done the other day. It was in the mid-50s, so obviously I, got, I was lucky to even get one cycle out of it. One final issue needs to be covered on this. The system I've built allows me to reduce the current on the internal grid heater to a safer, more sane level and still keep the PCM happy, so it never sets a P2609 code or puts an MIL on a dash. 
It also lets me watch the grid heater cycle in real time via the LED, and it gives me a method of ensuring that the grid heater relay never fails in the on position without me knowing it. However, there's a better way to skin the cat. I'm working on a small, low-energy, solid-state module that will be placed on the output of the intelligent battery sensor and prevent a P2609 code without the need for a dummy load resistor at all. Once this new device is built, you can completely disconnect your grid heater if you like, and you still will not get a P2609 code or set a check engine light. The new device looks directly at the grid heater command from the powertrain control module and synthetically supplies a pseudo signal to the body control module in conjunction with what the body control module is expecting to see from the ISB at that specific time. The concept is actually quite simple, but getting the values right will be a bit of a challenge. It'll be a good winter project. It'll be a lot smaller, lighter, safer, and cheaper than what I'm doing now. I'll see you then.